vocabulario de la comida. Y vamos a practicar también con vocabulario del hotel. Del hotel. Entonces, es una lección principalmente de practicar y aprender vocabulario, ¿verdad? Uh, and, you know, we're not going to get to everything with, um, uh, with el hotel, but we'll start to dip our toe in that for about half the class. Okay. Primero vamos a co comenzar con el tema de la comida. Y como un ejercicio de calentar, as a warm-up, como ejercicio de calentar, vamos a empezar con un video uh, con alguien que, que habla de, de la comida en términos muy generales. So we're going to have our, our video for kind of a warm-up listening to get our ears uh, keyed up first. And... Um, Then uh, I will give you my example, mi ejemplo. If some of you have prepared an example, I will welcome you to pop in and talk about food. And it's designed to be some, you know, anything to, to get you, uh, you know, to talk a little bit about whatever you like regarding food, a specific recipe, a dish, whatever. I, I will be talking about a specific recipe. Pero vamos a escuchar aquí con el video. We're going to open with this video. Y, ah, sí, a ver, aquí. Do you like grocery shopping? In today's video, we'll learn vocabulary about this activity as you go with me to the supermarket and help me get the food for the month. This video will be in Spanish and towards the end of it you will find a quiz for you to check your listening comprehension. As always, remember that this video has subtitles in Spanish, so if you need them, activate them with the closed caption button below. Before we go ahead with the video, let's get familiar with some vocabulary that you will hear. Al por menor, al por mayor, supermercado, almacén, centro comercial, ir de compras, hacer la compra, hacer mercado, económico, costoso, comestibles, detergente, Carrito, cesta, bolsas, cajero, lácteos, cítricos, carne. All right, let's go grocery shopping. Hoy nos vamos a comprar comida. En español hay muchas maneras de decir lo mismo. Entonces, en diferentes países tú puedes escuchar maneras diferentes de decir el término go grocery shopping. En algunos países tú puedes escuchar hacer la compra, hacer las compras o hacer mercado. Algunas personas también dicen ir a mercar. Generalmente tú vas a ir a un supermercado a hacer las compras. En un supermercado tú encuentras productos en menor cantidad, es decir, al por menor. Atención, porque si tú quieres ir a comprar ropa, la expresión en español es ir de compras. Y generalmente tú no vas al supermercado a comprar ropa, tú vas al centro comercial. Generalmente yo hago las compras una vez al mes y por eso vamos a ir a dos lugares hoy. Vamos a ir al supermercado y a la bodega o el almacén. Entonces, ¿estás listo? ¡Vamos! En el supermercado encuentras diferentes secciones. La sección de verduras, donde están las cebollas, las papas o patatas, y las frutas, como las manzanas rojas y verdes, y los cítricos. Algunos lugares tienen una sección de vinos y una sección de tecnología. Hay televisores, cámaras y parlantes. También encontramos una sección de lácteos, donde puedes conseguir el yogur, el queso y la leche. En el aseo para el hogar hay detergente. La comida para perros y gatos está en la sección de mascotas. Esta es la sección de comestibles y las carnes. En la caja, el cajero o la cajera pone los productos en una bolsa. Si quieres comprar productos en mayores cantidades, debes ir a una bodega o a un almacén, en donde encuentras productos al por mayor, es decir, 
productos en mayores cantidades que usualmente son más económicos. Entonces vamos a una bodega a ver qué encontramos. El almacén es más grande y encuentras productos al por mayor, como el papel higiénico. También encuentras productos lácteos, como la leche, y productos congelados, como la carne de pollo. Los encuentras en las neveras o congeladores. El arroz, por ejemplo, lo venden en bultos. Los productos son grandes y pesados, perfectos para una mujer fuerte, como yo. Finalmente, es hora de pagar nuestros productos y regresar a casa. Una diferencia entre mi país y este es que en mi país encuentras cestas para compras más pequeñas y carritos. Aquí solo encuentras carritos. Ahora pasamos nuestros productos al maletero del carro. Por fin, después de estar en los dos lugares, llegamos al apartamento y ahora te voy a mostrar lo que conseguimos o lo que compramos. Pero antes de eso, voy a darte una pequeña explicación acerca de los sustantivos contables y los sustantivos no contables. Los sustantivos contables o los nombres contables se pueden contar. Entonces tú puedes decir un banano, dos bananos, tres bananos. Puedes poner una cantidad. Pero los sustantivos no contables hablan acerca de sustancias que no se pueden medir por Números, uno, dos o tres. Por ejemplo, yo no puedo decir una leche o dos leches o tres leches porque está mal. Te voy a mostrar algunos ejemplos de sustantivos contables con los productos que compramos hoy. Y después te voy a mostrar el resto de productos que conseguimos para que conozcas el vocabulario de la comida. Entonces vamos a empezar por esto. Leche. Compramos leche de soya. Pero, como sabes, es un sustantivo no contable. Entonces, nosotros, si queremos decir la cantidad, vamos a tener que decir una caja de leche de soya. Ok. Now, I'm just going to interject here. When she talks about contables and no contables, that isn't so important for you guys right now. Just like really warehouse, you know, or, um, um, or a supermarket purchasing isn't such a big deal. You know, we're focusing on ingredients. In this but when she's talking about contables she just means things you can put a number on and usually you don't just say a milk you say I'm going to buy milk but maybe you'll say you're going to buy one bottle okay one bottle contable countable you don't need to worry about contable or uh, no contable but you know just go with it with it you know like you would not say I'm going to buy a rice <laughs> Una bolsa de arroz, uh, maybe a bag of rice, yeah, okay. Yeah. O dos cajas de leche de soya. También compramos jugo de naranja. En algunos países se dice zumo de naranja, pero yo digo jugo de naranja. Entonces, jugo de naranja es no contable, pero si queremos volverlo contable, tenemos que decir eh, qué lo contiene. Entonces, esto es una botella de jugo de naranja y así podemos contar una botella, dos botellas, tres botellas, etc. Salsa o oh, una botella de salsa. Tofu. A mí no me gusta mucho el tofu, pero bueno. Ok. Humus. Sal. Lo mismo. No es contable. Entonces, una caja de sal. Tenemos helado. Margarina. Oh. Arroz. Otro sustantivo no contable. Entonces, para volverlo contable, yo digo una bolsa de arroz. Bueno, ahora vamos a la sección de sustantivos contables. Empecemos por los champiñones. Tenemos también tortillas. Me gustan mucho las tortillas. Lentejas. Compramos dos bolsas de lentejas. Uh, bananos. Yo sé que están verdes, pero nos gusta tenerlos y esperar a que estén bien para comerlos después. Muy bien. Tenemos también tomates. Zanahorias. Y huevos. 
Y bueno, para terminar te voy a mostrar algunos productos que conseguimos y tú vas a decirme o tú vas a pensar si son contables o no contables. Entonces, cebollas. Esto es leche de coco. Nosotros no tomamos leche de vaca, pero uh, tomamos leche de coco o leche de soya. Tenemos coliflor. Nos gusta comprar eh, vegetales congelados. Brócoli. Frutas congeladas. Nutella. Nos gusta mucho la Nutella. Pero esto es un lujo porque pues es un poco costoso. Bueno, ¿qué más? Uh, I think I showed everything. Well, so how was the video for you? Did you get all the words or just a couple of them? Let us know your answer in the comments below. Also, let us know how often do you go grocery shopping in Spanish. Now, let's test your understanding with a quiz. ¿Con qué frecuencia María hace las compras? A. Una vez a la semana. B. Una vez al mes. C. Dos veces al mes. D. Todos los días. B. Una vez al mes. ¿En qué sección del supermercado está la leche? A. Mascotas. B. Frutas y verduras. C. Lácteos. D. Comestibles. C. Lácteos. La persona que recibe el pago de las compras en el supermercado es... A. La caja. B. El cliente. C. El cajero o la cajera. D. El jefe. C. El cajero o la cajera. La sal es un sustantivo. A. Contable. B. No contable. B. No contable. ¿En dónde puedo transportar mis productos dentro del supermercado? A. En una mochila. B. En un carrito. C. En las manos de mi esposo o esposa. D. En mis bolsillos. B. En un carrito. Well, how did you do with these questions? How many answers did you get? Okay, I'm going to pause and go through some of these to make sure that you know what all the vocabulary was. And, you know, sometimes if it goes fast or you may use vocabulary you don't know, but you're getting guessing from context. And actually, that is a really good skill to work on. Okay, con qué frecuencia, with what frequency. So we would say how often, ¿verdad? Okay. ¿Con qué frecuencia María hace la, las compras? Uh, una vez, una vez, vez is a time, an iteration of time. So whenever you see vez, B-E-Z, it means a time. Not time like on your watch, but an iteration like one time, two times, three times. I clean the kitchen counters three times a day. That would be, I would use vez, tres veces. Una vez a la semana, una vez al mes, dos meses al, uh, al mes, todos los días. So, once a week, right? Once a month, mes es month. Dos veces al mes, twice a month, or todos los días. Every day. Right, every day, literally all the days, but that's one way to say todos los días. There are other ways, but that's one way to say todos los días, every day. Okay, so una vez, dos veces, once, twice. Una vez al mes, yo no puedo ir de compras una vez al mes. Es imposible. Es imposible en, en una casa con, con mis dos hijos que ahora viven con nosotros. Es imposible una vez al mes. Um, yo una vez a la semana, generalmente, y ahora es difícil, pero así es. Ok. 
A ver, ¿con qué frecuencia uh, es la respuesta? Ok. ¿En qué sección? ¿En qué sección del supermercado está la leche? And mascotas are pets. Mm -hmm. right? Frutas y verduras, fruits and veggies. Mm, la leche, no. Uh, lactose. We know that lactose word, mm -hmm. which to us comes in a very scientific sense. This is where you can plug in a lot of your, uh, you know, higher range or higher level English vocabulary because a lot of our uh, higher level words in English, meaning not necessarily everyday words, but higher level words that came into English from the French and therefore from Latin. We can guess things from that. And because you know lactose and lactose intolerance, right? Lacteos, you can guess, is going to be leche, right? Comestibles just means food items in general. Comestibles means just, you know, if I've got a bag full of groceries, groceries would be comestibles, just food stuff, right? Okay. Lacteos, donde está la leche. Okay. Esto es importante. This one's important because you may even see signs in a store with a couple of these terms. La persona que recibe, re, recibe, receives. Pago payment. Pagar to pay, pago payment. Okay, la persona que recibe el pago. The person who receives payment de las compras or purchases, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and here it could be a little bit tricky if you didn't know the answer. We can narrow this one down to two. Cliente, you know, looks like client. So that's not going to be the person receiving. Jefe is a boss. And so probably not the boss of the whole supermarket. So that narrows it down to la caja, right? Or el cajero, la cajera. And those words are really close. La caja is what you may see a sign saying la caja. Caja means the ca like the cash register. So caja refers to, you know, the, the space, the physical space where the cash register is. So whenever you see a sign that says la caja, and you may even see, see a sign that says la caja in a bank. And that would be the teller area. So la caja es una palabra importante. This is an important word to know. It's going to be wherever uh, an actual money transaction happens. Because there's going to be a cash register where it says la caja. And el cajero or la cajera, there's the masculine and feminine versions. That's the person stationed at la caja. E-R-O at the end of cajero, E-R-A at the end of cajera means a person who works in that place. So the person who works at la caja is called el cajero, la cajera. So the cashier, not the cash register, la caja, but cashier. That will be el cajero, la cajera. And that E-R-O word always indicates a person who does a certain job in this case, working the cash register. Uh, contable, no contable, doesn't really matter for you guys, but this was our, our funny, our ha-ha question. En donde puedo tra transportar? How can I transport, carry out mis productos, my products? Dentro del supermercado, from inside the supermarket, and she's got en una mochila. Mochila would be a backpack, right? En un carrito. Carrito is a cart. Carro in Latinoamérica significa car. A uh, carro. Carro would indicate like a car, an actual car that you drive. Carrito. Carrito is the cart, your shopping cart, especially in Spain. In Spain, they don't use carro for the car that you physically drive. They use coche. 
Um, I know in some places in South America, they do use coche as well for car, but carrito in Spain is always a little cart. Okay, un carrito en las manos de mi esposo, in my husband's hands, which are generally not going to be big enough for all your groceries. In mi, mis bolsillos, in my pockets, no, <laughs> not going to fit in your pockets. So, okay, vale. So there we go with our video, el video de hoy. Okay, vamos a empezar, uh, momento. And I will send you the link so you can watch that again. You may want, want to watch that again and you may want to, um, you know, set it to 75% speed perhaps. Next time, turn on all the, um, uh, subtitles, closed captions, so you can watch that. Okay. Uh, voy, a, voy a mostrarle, voy a hablar de mi receta. Ahora voy a hablar de mi receta. And I've got to move my screen so I'm in front of my camera now. Vale, voy a hablar de una ensalada especial. Uh, mi plato será claro un poquito más complicado. My, mine will be a little more complicated than yours, está bien. No voy a hablar de la manera de preparar. I'm not going to talk about how we prepare this all. Sí. Será obvio. It will be kind of obvious how you prepare it. Es una ensalada. Es una, una ensalada de una receta de Perú. La, esta ensalada es una ensalada tradicional de, del Perú que se llama, ah, se llama, se llama solterito, solterito. Voy a escribir el nombre aquí en, en chat. I'm going to write this in the, ¿dónde está chat? Where'd my chat box go? Aquí viene, here it comes. Solterito. Uh, solo quiere decir just or only or alone. Y sol, soltero means a bachelor. Entonces solterito es como little bachelor. <laughs> little bachelor guy. I think probably this name of this dish evolved from years and years of a little old bachelor having to fix his own meal from just what was left over in, in the house. Probably, es probable, I would say that is probable, uh, el solterito. Voy a hablar de los ingredientes, los ingredientes de, de este plato tradicional del Perú. Y, uh, los ingredientes hay, uh, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez, once. Hay once o doce ingredientes. Doce, creo. Doce ingredientes en esta ensalada. Primero, el ingrediente principal, el ingrediente principal uh, son, um, o oh, es, habas verdes habas habas verdes so, habas verdes son lima beans por lo general generalmente a mí no me gustan las habas verdes bien habas verdes y voy a escribir habas verdes habas verdes habas verdes son green beans habas verdes son lima beans sí Uh, pero en esta ensalada me encantan, me encantan las alas verdes. Ok. Uh, bien, alas verdes. Otro ingrediente es el maíz. El maíz es un, un ingrediente no contable. ¿A corn? No. Maíz, corn, ¿verdad? Maíz. Ok. Voy a escribir uh, maíz. El maíz. Uh. El maíz. Otro ingrediente eh, uh, es las aceitunas. Las aceitunas negras. 
las aceitunas negras. Las aceitunas negras. Uh, a ver. La, la cebolla verde. Oh, no, uh, ro, uh, roja, perdón. La cebolla roja. Uh, Se puede usar cebolla. Cebolla blanca. Es posible. Uh, la, uh, la, ce, uh, la cebolla uh, roja. La cebolla roja. a uh, Un chile. Un chile. Claro, en Perú hay un tipo de chile especial que es ingrediente en uh, el solterito. Y el, el chile especial se llama rocoto. Pero es imposible, no se puede comprar rocoto en Estados Unidos. Rocoto se vende solamente en Perú. Entonces uso un chile normal, un chile normal aquí de Estados Unidos. Ah, un tomate, un tomate, bien, un tomate, ¿qué más? Queso, cheese, sí, ok. Uh, tomate, queso, cheese, uh, un chile, sal y pimienta, sal y pimienta, ¿verdad? Sal y pimienta. Y hay dos ingredientes al final, al final de la preparación. Añado a aceite, oil. Aceite uh, de oliva. Olive oil. Y por fin, uh, vinagre. Vinagre. Tres cucharadas, three tablespoons, tres cucharadas de aceite de oliva y tres cucharadas de uh, vinagre. Uh, un ingrediente más, un ingrediente más. Casi se me olvidó. I almost forgot. Momentito. Y tengo un, una foto. Porque es difícil. Ah, aquí. Ah. Ok, perdón. Tengo que arreglar mis pantallas. I've got to arrange my screens a little bit. Un poquito. Ah, bien. El, el ingrediente final, el último ingrediente, es el perejil. El perejil, el perejil es, el perejil es parsley. Parsley. El perejil. Entonces, habas verdes, perejil, uh, maíz, aceitunas, cebolla, queso, chile, sal, pimienta. Ah, uh. hay, hay 12 o quizás 13 ingredientes en esta ensalada. ¿Ok? Está bien. Está bien. Ok, vale. Uh, claro, mi receta, mi plato es más complicado, pero es otro ejemplo. ¿Alguien quiere empezar? Does somebody want to start to talk about a food or something simple? Algo fácil, something easy. ¿Tienen algo? I can go. Um, I can start. Ok. So, shall I go first? Or? Sí, Nora. Bien, sí. 
Okay, okay. Let me just get up my notes. Um, can you see this? Es, oh, es humus. <laughs> okay. This isn't, this isn't as fancy as yours, Marilyn, but. <laughs> Me encanta. Okay. Me uh, gusta el humus y lo como para almorzar varios días a la semana. So I like hummus and I eat it for lunch several days a week. Um, algunos de los ingredientes son garbanzos, tahini, ajo y jugo de limón. Uh, jugo de favorite, limón. Oops. No, me yeah. gusta el jugo de mi limón. Perdón. Continúa. Okay. Um, <coughs> mi marca favorita de humas es de Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's es, es una tienda muy popular, ¿no? Tienen cosas muy frescas. Cosas muy frescas, ¿no? Uh, is that fresh? Exacto. Ah, sí. <laughs> sí, me encanta Trader Joe's. <laughs> Tengo que manejar uh, desde Fountain Hills hasta Scottsdale para uh, uh, comprar Scottsdale. cosas en Trader Joe's. Me, me encanta Trader Joe's. Scottsdale, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright. Exacto, sí, sí, sí. <laughs> ok, muy bien. El humus es algo muy popular uh, con vegetarianos también, ¿verdad? Con los vegetarianos también. A, a mi esposo le gusta muchísimo el humus, pero ahora no puede comerlo. En una dieta de keto, keto, dieta de keto, no se puede comer humus. Yo puedo comer humus porque no como la dieta de, de Quito, pero... <risa> ok, gracias Nora. ¿Alguien tiene otra cosa? I'll try. Um, ah, I, bien. I actually typed mine and tried to share the screen, but I needed help from my daughter. So we'll see how it works out. But mine's, mine is also hummus, but I'm going to try and share the screen. Do you want me to do that or not? I hope that works. And if it doesn't, that means I, I need to go back and look at my... Well, I don't have to because I typed in a really big font. Too. Oh! Estás preparada. Wow, you're prepared. Well, I'm trying. Do you want me to do this just so it doesn't mess up? Está bien. Okay. Well, I'll... I, I know somebody tried Thursday to share something and it didn't work. And I, I think I've still got some setting I might, might need to tinker with. But, you know, yeah. With my luck, I'll, I'll, I'll lose Zoom and everything. So. Okay. Um, well, anyway, this is a really big font, but I see, can't see, really... see. Podemos ver. We can see. And it is, can, it will look to you like it. it's backwards, but it's not backwards to us. Right. So. But I have to try to read it, too. So. <laughs> um, oh, wait, I might have it written down. Well, anyway, can you see it? Okay. Try it. I'll read it backwards. That's how, that's practicing Spanish. Está bien, sí. Uh, there's a nap. Mi apertivo favorito. This is really challenging. As humus. <laughs> Comemos todos las noches con, I, that's hard to say, carrots. Zanahorias. Well, I can read it frontwards. That, that, that word, it, it, you know, that word challenges a lot of people because you've got to start out with an S sound, not a Z sound. Oh, okay. And then you have to ignore the H. Okay. Well, I can do it frontwards easily. But anyway, e, uh, apias. Apias. Celery. Right. Es muy fácil hacer. Hay nueve ingredientes. Los ingredientes son los uh, garbanzos, mm -hmm. el tahini, um, jugo de limón, mm -hmm. ajo, aceite de... Oh, oliva. Oliva, oliva. Sal. Um, Agua, paprika, el pimiento, pimiento rojo, and this is a good one, 
Hoelos. Ojuelas. Ojuelos. No H sound. Ojuelos. Um, mezclo todos los ingredientes en una licuadora. Licuadora. Um, licuadora. Next, you know, yeah, pro food processor, sí. Blender, sí. Eh, exacto, okay. blender, sí. Suervo con vegetables y el pan pita. Ah, el pan pita, sí, también, <laughs> sí. ¿Y qué es tahini, realmente? It's hard to find. No. It is, sí. It's not say? hard. I can tell no. you where, no, you can find it in Caspian. Do you know Caspian? It's the grocery store next to the Persian room. Right. Oh! Yes. They have a uh, tahini. And... Um, Is it a product vegetal? Is it a vegetable product? Yes, they do it's have. It's a pasta. It's a paste of some kind? Sesame. Uh, yeah. Sesame seeds. Mm -hmm. Yes, sesame. Oh, okay. Ah! Uh, uh, yeah. Gracias. Muy bien. Muy bien. Una, una pasta de semillas de sesame, right? sesame. Okay, muy bien. Otra persona tiene... I can do. Okay, Mary. But mine is actually um, dessert. Ah, uh, ooh, un postre. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, mi postre favorito es el pastel de chocolate. Uh, tengo una buena receta, receta que me gusta hacer. Uh, los ingredientes son mantequilla, uh, derritido chocolate, huevos, um, azúcar y harina de elmandera, elmandras. El Almendras, sí, almendras. Almendras, ya. Yeah. Mezclé todos los ingredientes y lo puse en el horno por 40 minutos. Uh, solamente 40 minutos. Muy bien. Me encanta el pastel, el pastel de chocolate. Ah, mi esposo no puede comer chocolate, pastel de chocolate <risa> tampoco porque... No se puede comer nada con una dieta de keto. Uh -huh. <laughs> mantequilla know. sí, mantequilla sí. Uh -huh. Pero harina, flour, nada. Pobrecito, pobrecito. Horneo, uh, mo, uh, horneo uh, para mis hijos. I, I cook, I, I bake for my kids. Horneo uh -huh. para mis hijos. Para él. Nada. Ok. <risa> ¿Alguien tiene otra, otra cosa, otra, otro tipo de comida? ¿Anybody got a different type of food? Sí. Oh, ok. Ah, uh, 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 las dos. ¿Quién? ¿Quién? Ah, Cynthia, ¿quieres empezar? Ok. Ok. Uh, no cocino. Uh, pero puedo hacer... Ota, A, L, L, O. Ah! Es fácil. Necesitas una caja de gelatina, una taza de agua muy caliente y una taza de agua fría. Conseguir una taza Medio dura, una olla, una cochera para revolver y algunos pozones. Primero, yar face, uh, agua. <laughs> agua es, hirviente, a uh, boiling water. Sí, sí. Exacto. Uh, entonces, agregas gelatina y revo, revolva, luego agregas agua fría. 
ponga la creatina en un tazón en el refrigerador durante 30 y 60 minutos. Puedo agregar fruta o cremo batida. Es delicioso y solo 10 calor, calorías. ¿Diez? Sí, oh, oh, solo 10. ¿Diez? Oh, no sabía. I did not know. Ok. Ah, se dice en, no, se no, dice no, en no, español no. gelatina. Y también se conoce por la marca Jello. I, I would imagine that's one of the, the brands, la marca, la marca, the brand. Uh, the, Saben, I, I would imagine they probably have that brand. Pero se dice uh, gelatina. La palabra técnica. Sí. Ok. Y hay que hervir. You need to boil. Hervir el agua. Y entonces, segundo, eh, el agua fría. Sí. Vale. Muy bien. Ok. Gracias. Es buena receta si no cocinas. If you don't cook. Okay. <laughs> okay. Muy bien. Y siguiente. Next. Diane. Bien, bien, Diane. Diana, continúa. No, Laura, Diane. <laughs> no, Laura, sí. <laughs> Mi favorita comida de México es quesadillas. Preparo a mi casa y perdido en el restaurante. Siempre tengo los camarones, 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 camarones con queso y las verduras. Camarones, shrimp. Sí, camarones. Hay algunos ingredientes, tortillas de harina. Camarones, queso y verduras. Cuando hago la quesadilla a mi casa, uso las verduras son aquí. Uso monte las cebolas, las espinazas, espinazas, espinacas, 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 espinacas son spinach. Espinacas. It's always used in plural. Las espinacas. Las espinacas y los pimentos verdes. Otra vez solo camarones y queso. Tengo que picar y cocinar las verdur verduras por 10 minutos. Agrega los camarones por 4 minutos. Pongo las ingredientes en una tortilla grande con el queso y doble la tortilla. Cocine la tortilla hasta que el queso es derrita. Sí, doble, fold. Muy bien. Fantástico. Hiciste bien, hiciste bien. Vale. Uh, ¿Alguien tiene... Otro plato. Anybody else got one to share? Sí o no? A question? Sí, sí. Dime. Someone else and I both said pimentos verdes. And you said chile roja. Yeah. Okay. Um, there are... Food vocabulary is one of those words where there are a lot of regional variations or a lot of very technical little changes. So, um, pimiento is a, a pepper of some kind. Okay. Okay. Uh, the pepper, oh, como esto. Pepper like this uh, is it's used with the feminine word. I'm putting it in the chat box there, if you can see the chat box or, or click on your chat 
I can, so you can see it. Uh, es pimienta, pimienta. This is always used as pimienta. Esto, pimiento o chile. Oh. And in different countries where they have really specific kinds of chiles, in many parts of South America, like in, in um, Peru, uh, they won't even call this a chile. They'll call it a rocoto because it's a specific kind. And there are even rocotos that are serranos that are, are like made off in the hills, like out in the country, and ones that come from like more people near town. So they get really, really, really specific. But there are words that will vary sometimes even within a country, with, within different regions. Food words are some of the hardest words to tag down because of course with Spanish, you got 20 different countries and you can get, popcorn has, I am not kidding you, popcorn goes by about 12 different words, depending on what country you're in. I have seen videos with people, they brought in people from like seven different countries and they're like, you call it that? We don't call it that. I wouldn't even know what you're talking about if you call it that. So oddly enough, oddly enough, certain food words regionally just start to go way off into the tangents of totally different words. Whereas people would say, you call it that. Um, even something as simple as a lemon. Uh, Limon, limon, lemon, yeah? Okay. In parts of Colombia, they call limon a lima, which for me means lime. Uh -huh. I would never use lima to talk about limon. It really, really, it can, it can go way off into different vocabulary. So, you know, quite often, if you get a little bit thrown for words, never, never hesitate to ask somebody, ¿Qué es eso? What is that? ¿Qué es eso? <laughs> ¿Qué es? What is it? Never be afraid because it may be, you know, a regional variation. Uh, también, también, maíz. Maíz in different words in different countries gets mm -hmm. different names. Um, eloje, you know, all kinds of different words. So, um, depende, it depends. Food is a tricky thing. Um, okay, hay más preguntas. Are there more? Yes, Marilyn, um, I had a question about your presentation and I may have misheard you, but when you talked about olive oil, you actually used the word oliva. Oliva. Oliva, but when you talked about black olives, was, was there something different that you said? Yeah, yeah, see, 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 Aceitunas, aceitunas. Olive oil actually comes from olives. olives, yeah. And sometimes you do hear word, people using olivas, olivas, yeah, but aceitunas, olives. Um, a lot of times, especially in Spain, where I did a lot of studying, Aceitunas are a, a common thing with tapas. Tapas are those little hors d'oeuvres. So it's kind of like the, the dim sum of Spain. <laughs> you know, they'll bring out little dishes or they'll lay them out on the countertop. Now with coronavirus, I know they don't lay them out on the countertop anymore. Yeah, because, yeah. Okay, but aceitunas, these will come stuffed. They'll come marinated. People will serve just bowls of aceitunas, you know, pitted things they'll be they'll be stuffed with stuffed with uh pimientas yeah they'll be uh marinated in all kinds of spicy little things so aceite de oliva aceite de oliva is oil from olives uh, but aceitunas is generally what is used uh, El olivo, olivo with an O at the end of it, olivo is the tree it grows on. Uh, quite often, and I will type this in for you. Um, you know, we have the word naranja, orange. If you heard a person talk about naranjo, it's the orange tree. The tree it grows on. 
Uh, manzana and apple, right? Manzana is the tree it grows on. Oh, okay. Um, olivo will generally be the olive tree. Okay. Um, so yeah, you know, uh, um, food words have lots of little nuances, but you know, uh, and it takes a long time to get adjusted to a lot of food words. But you know, a lot of times it's really important to know certain categories. Uh, um, like, like verduras, veggies, right? You know, where you are right now, uh, at the stage you're at, you want to know that frutas are fruits, right? Verduras, veggies, uh, carne, meat, right? Uh, pescado, fish. And I separate carne y pescado, I separate those because very often on a menu, mm -hmm. when you look at a menu, you're gonna see those items separated. Often they will not be glommed together in, uh, you know, like one part of the menu. Uh, some menus even get down to um, even get down to aves, meaning it's from mm -hmm. a bird, you know, mm -hmm. quail or chicken or you know, whatever. Uh, but often pescado fish is separated from carne meat, uh, and you know. Uh, it's good to know that term, vegetariano. Vegetariano, ser vegetariano is muy común. Being a vegetarian is very common no matter what country. And there are a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of restaurants that will have sections of their menu or, or things, um, you know, starred off to the side where it'll say, you know, plato vegetariano, vegetarian plate. They are very accustomed to people requesting vegetarian food that is not at all out of the realm. Um, hace cuatro años, four years ago, hace cuatro años fui a España. Four years ago, I went to Spain with a group of kids that we took at that time, my daughter being in that group uh, when she was in high school. And um, when we put in a request for a vegetarian meal it, with the big group, not a problem. We had somebody who was gluten-free. That is a problem. I had to go up to the waiters and explain we had one person in our group who needed gluten-free. And I was sitting there thinking, ¿Cómo se dice gluten? And I said, you know, ¿Cómo se dice gluten? And, and the guy went, oh, you know, and he, he recognized some gluten. He knew what I meant. But... But, so he, he understood the term, que puedo servir, what can I serve? And I had to like pick things that I knew she could not eat. No, no se puede comer pan. Uh, no se, yeah, you know, entonces sí. Muchas verduras, está bien, pero algo con harina, no se puede comer. You know, something with flour, not at all. Oh, he got that. So, you know, he ticked off some ingredients for me. I, yep, si, si, si. Oh, no. <laughs> Pasteles, no. Yeah. Croissant, no. <laughs> Pan, no. Uh, so, you know, it's interesting. Certain things, they will get what to do. He was totally thrown by that. I think he would have totally be thrown by keto. Keto was not a thing back then, four years ago. Now it is a thing. Mm. Uh, and I think they use, just use keto. I, I, I kind of started to look at that just for fun. I think they just do have that word keto, like we have keto. Uh, I don't know if they pronounce it keto or keto, but I, I'll, now, now I'm going to have to look for this week. Okay. Está bien, está bien. Dietas, dietas especiales. Hay dietas especiales. There are special diets. Y a veces causa causa problemas un poquito, a little bit. Okay, uh, 
Vamos a introducir, vamos a cambiar uh, de tema. We're going to change our theme a little bit. Uh, we had a request to start to get into this realm of el hotel. ¿No? La comida es importante. Cuando, cuando una persona viaja, cuando se viaja, when one travels, one travels, meaning nobody in particular, cuando se viaja, when someone travels, cuando se viaja, la comida es importante, la medicina es importante, la farmacia, ¿no? Uh, el hotel es importante, el aeropuerto es importante. Y vamos a, vamos a aprender uh, algunas palabras importantes con el hotel. I will be giving you, mm -hmm. I think, about uh, two, dos o tres, dos o tres, two or three sites. I, we won't go into all of it today because it can be a little bit complicated, but I will give you some sites because each site has kind of a different aspect that is helpful. So we're going to take a look at these and I'm going to show you which sections you may want to look at this week later on. Because next week your assignment will be to come in and talk a little about, uh, talk about what you personally want when you book a hotel. Mm -hmm. What you personally want. Okay. Um, there is a, a big video on this. I'm choosing not to show it to you this week. Um, you know, I think I will send it to you in, a, in an email link to watch. It's, it goes a little fast. And I will show it at the beginning of our session next week. It goes a little fast and it uses a lot of long phrases. So I'm choosing not to do it today, right now. Uh, but, pero, vamos a ver uh, algunas cositas. We're going to take a look at a couple of things. So I'm going to share a few screens. And you don't need to take copious notes because I'll show you, I'll, I'll send the links to you via email for all these screens. Um, but there are kind of two things we want to think about when we talk about el hotel. Un tema, una cosa importante, one important thing is to let, take a look at just the vocabulary. Y es importante, and that's a biggie. Some of this vocabulary you'll be able to kind of guess from cognates, some of it not. Uh, the other part, la otra parte, there are going to be certain verbs that will be more helpful to you than others for communicating with person, people in a hotel. And a lot of these are going to be simple verbs. So this very first screen talks about phrases. And here's what we want to look at. Important phrases for hotels. We want to look at some of these verbs, these things that will link together with the vocabulary. And I'm going to try to make this a little bit bigger. Okay. And wow, here are some phrases, and they're more verb related, that we're going to want to pair up with straight off vocabulary. I. When you go into a hotel, um, you know, let's say you have not booked online, or maybe you're communicating in a chat box, because you know, a lot of reservations are done online. They may have a, a, a chat thing for you to type in questions. I is there. You know, if you want to ask, what amenities are the in the hotel? You're going to want that verb. And I is that great, great verb that you don't need to change to any other form. Yay. I, it's always I. You're not going to use a your form or nosotros form. It's always just I. Okay. I, tiene, do you have? And that's put in the polite form. 
because when you're talking with a hotel, you're not going to chit chat with them in the tu, familiar you form. You're always going to use an usted or maybe an ustedes, you guys. That's okay too. In those forms, tiene, hay en tiene. And I'm going to have a big screen that will kind of chunk this out for you. Quiero. And we're going to show you the more polite form for quiero. I have to caution you with quiero. Quiero sounds a little more forceful to some people. It sounds to some people kind of demanding. So I will show you in a later screen share a word that is a little more soft pedal, a little less demanding sounding, a little more polite sounding than quiero. But quiero does work. I would like, and, you know, tengo, ah, tengo. Yes, I, you already know that word, I have. Tengo is a yo form of tiene that you see in that, that second bullet point. And cuanto cuesta, how much does something cost? Okay. Uh, some phrases you may wanna know. Hay una piscina, is there a pool? For some people, it's an important thing to know whether or not there's a pool. Hay una piscina. And by the way, there's a different, uh, alberga, alberga is a, a different word they use more in Mexico for piscina. You'll see that in, in the other video that I will send a link for. Uh, no, no hay papel higiénico. <laughs> there's no toilet paper. Aquí no hay papel higiénico tampoco. Yeah, there's no toilet paper here either, but for different reasons. Okay. Papel higiénico. Hygienic paper. That's TP. Papel higiénico. That's a lot. Isn't that a mouthful for toilet paper? But that's the way they say it. Papel higiénico. Hygienic paper. Habitación is generally your hotel room. Right? That's a general word for habitación, for hotel room. Habitación. Habitación. Habitation is what it looks like. Habitación. People may also use the word cuarto. Cuarto, which also means room and can mean a hotel room. People would understand no matter what country you go to. If you use cuarto for room or habitación, they'll understand that the same. Tiene habitaciones. They have rooms. Ah, uh, oh, tiene el hotel acceso a internet. Does the hotel have internet access? Eh, ahora es importante. Now, this is a thing. Hace 10 años, 10 years ago? We didn't ask this question unless you were traveling for business and you had a modem to plug in. Ahora, ahora es importante. También se dice wifi. They also use the term wifi. Many, many places just kind of use the phonetic Wi-Fi, W-I-F-I, Wi-Fi. But acceso a internet, some places will use that. Depende. I have heard both. Uh, quiero una habitación. Quiero una habitación con ducha. I would like a room with a shower. It's important to know some people have more of that. Uh, you know, if you go for the really absolute cheap room, there could be shared bathroom situations. You know, so especially for students who travel, for them, it's not a big deal to go down the hall to go to a shared bathroom with other people. Uh, for most of us, Adultos, for most of us, lots of us like to have a private bath, especially these days. Habitación con baño or habitación con ducha. You know, for those of us who like our privacy or just like to know that it's really sanitary, you may not want that shared bathroom thing. Traveling students, college students may not care. Okay. Tengo una uh, uh, reserva. Tengo una reserva. I have a reservation. Sometimes that word a reservación is also used. Reservación works the same as reserva. And of course, just indicating that I've got a problem can be helpful. Tengo un, 
I, and you know what? This is incorrect. Ah, that is a, a typo, folks. Tengo un problema. That is kind of a bad problem. Tengo un problema. That should not be written as una problema. No, 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 no. Tengo un problema. So that is a typo on their part. Okay, but these are things that are very, very helpful. Uh, por noche, per night. Cuanto cuesta por noche? How much does it cost per night? Por persona, per person. Uh, piscina, swimming pool. I'll, I'll uh, kind of update my, my Google slide to put that other word for pool in also. Uh, cama, bed. Uh, Barato, cheap, economico also means cheap. So those are synonymous, right? Uh, manta is a blanket. Aire acondicionado, there's something you often want to ask about because some rooms may not be air conditioned. To be honest with you, some places, especially if you go to Spain and Europe, don't need to be air conditioned. If you're in a mountainous region, and you've got nice windows to open. Now with global warming, sadly, they are starting to realize in Europe that some places do put more air conditioning in, but a lot of places do not because the fresh air is enough. Llave, key, caja de seguridad, uh, safe. Uh, I've never used that, well, yeah. Ah, desayuno incluido. Breakfast included. You may want to ask about that. Habitación, room, right? Habitación individual, a single room. Habitación doble, a double room. Here are some terms to begin with that are really, really, really helpful. Um, so with the exception of this, ooh, that really bugs me that tengo una problema. Tengo un problema, with the exception of that. This is a really useful page for a lot of vocabulary. Um, vamos a ver. I will send you to the link for that. Uh, I am also looking. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think I will also send you this. Uh, I will share this with you now. You know, there's no way you're going to memorize all these terms, but you may find in things in there that are useful to you. And it's also helpful to know some things uh, like this word, la pension, pension. Boarding house is kind of, I don't want to say misnomer. Well, it is in sense a boarding house. Pension is uh, very frequent in Spain. You know, it's it's more like, a, I wanna say more like a bed and breakfast. Because when we say boarding house, wow, you know, I think borders, people are living there for a while, indefinite. But this pension is a situation where there may be shared bathrooms. That's an important thing to know when you're booking things. If something is listed as a pension, there may be a few rooms that have baño privado, con baño, you know, with a bathroom that's private, but many of the rooms may not. So that's a distinction that's important to know. Um, Cuarto doble, right? Habitación doble, double room. Uh, you know, you may want to ask about an elevator. For some people, that's important. A servicio de cuarto, room service. That may be something you look for. Ducha, yeah. Do you really need a botones, a bellhop? No, no lo necesito, I don't need it, but you know, some people like that. Un balcón, you may want a balcony that faces the beach, maybe. Aire acondicionado, yeah. Uh, 
la cuenta, el recibo, desayuno. A lot of people want to know if breakfast is included. Um, <laughs> cama matrimonial. <laughs> That's the same as doble, right? That's just a different term for a bigger bed. Some places, by the way, have taken to use uh, taken to using the term cama king size. King size, borrowing it straight out of the English, in many places in Mexico, Mexico, you will hear just king size. That used as a term. Um, so, you know, pension completa, full board, meaning meals are served, right, along with that. And there are some uh, use, useful phrases down here, okay? Um, but, but, the big thing we're going to show you here, um, when you speak directly with folks in a hotel situation, I will send you this set of slides. Quiero and quisiera um, are two words you're going to start to hear. Equal. Which one do you use? And I'll show you the difference between them. Uh, this just segs in with two of, before we get to quiero and quisiera, verbos básicos, some basic verbs. I, and again, I'll send you the link to this. I, you already know how to use because you don't have to change it. Es fácil, that's easy. Tiene, do you have? And I've got all the forms that tiene can take, but the starred ones are the ones that you will want to use, that bottom uh, row. Tiene usted, tienen ustedes. When you're talking at a reception desk in a hotel, you always want to use the polite you, whether that's a singular or a you guys. That would be totally understood. So, tiene or tienen, okay? Uh, and that IE thing is called the stem change. I will highlight that so that you see it. You notice the tangle form does not have an IE, but these other forms, many of them do have an IE. That is called the stem change. And this verb querer, for want, when you're expressing at a hotel desk what you want, is a verb that may be very useful to you. Uh, when you use querer, always, 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 when you're speaking to the person directly, put that por favor in. Querer has a stronger, little more demanding kind of sound to it in Spanish, slightly. Uh, so always make sure you pair it up with a por favor. If you're just talking about what you want with me, for example, because you're not requesting it, you know, if you would just say, well, you know, generally, I want a double room for my husband and me. Then it's perfectly great to use quiero, because you're just, you're not asking me directly, you're just talking about it, right? Quiero una habitación doble. Quiero una habitación doble. I want a double room. But when you're directly talking to the person at the hotel desk, you always want to put a por favor because you're asking them that question. Entienden? Do you understand that? So if you're just communicating with other people, you don't need to zing that por favor in, but when you're talking with the person you're directly requesting, always good to put a por favor. Okay. So, depending on the context. You know, when you're ordering fast food, it's a quick, quick question. The quiero thing is a great verb to use. Quiero. And notice that querer is the verb it comes from. Querer does not have a Q-U-I-E. But when you get to the forms of querer, a lot of them get an I-E. This is a technical thing called a stem change. And we'll get into that come fall. We're not going to get technically into what a stem change is. But for your intents and purposes, that means you just want to know those forms. Quiero. And it sounds like the word key, like a key you use in a door. Quiero. We don't pronounce the U in querer. 
that U goes not pronounced. It's one of the few letters that doesn't really, it's not quiero, it's quiero. So it'll sound like the word key with ero, tactamian. Quiero. Quieres, you want quiere. Yay, quiere, starred. That's what you want to use when you talk to the hotel desk. Or quieren. Do you, or you know, they want. The hotel person may ask, que quieren ustedes? If two of you are standing there, you and a husband, a spouse, or you and a friend traveling together, they may ask, que quieren ustedes? Que quieren? They may not even use the word ustedes. Que quieren? What do you guys want? So, quiero, quieres, quiere, quieren. Queremos, oddly, goes back to that infinitive of querer and does not use the letter I. Okay, so here's the want verb. And we haven't really used that much yet. But this week when you're uh, figuring out what you want to talk about, what you want in a room, I want this, I want that, okay? Um, you may want that verb. Okay. Quiero can be paired up with a thing or it can be paired up with an infinitive. Ejemplos, examples. Quiero una horchata. Horchata is that, that nice little kind of, it sounds gross, but it's wonderful. It's a, you know, almond and rice drink, you know, muy tradicional, really traditional in, in Mexico. Uh, in Espanol también. Orchata. Quiero una orchata. I want an orchata. You know, if I'm just up at a place where people are lining up to get a drink, that quiero is a quick way to ask for it. You don't need to worry too much about being super polite. Quiero una, or, una orchata. Queremos dos tacos. Right? I'm in line. I'm lining up to get some. Uh, quiero tomar un café para llevar. I want to get a, a coffee to go. Para llevar is to go. So, quiero tomar, I want to take, meaning I want to drink that later. That's quiero plus the infinitive. Quiero with tacos, quiero with horchata, that's quiero with a thing. Okay? Bien. A more polite, ah, you're not in line at a, a food truck. Uh, you are... Uh, you are rather at the hotel lobby. Uh, you're at a nice sit-down dinner. You may want to sound, sound more polite than using quiero, which is a little more forceful. You're going to really want to use this verb instead when you're talking directly to the person in the restaurant, the camarero, the camarera, when you're talking directly to uh, a recepcionista, the receptionist, right? In an hotel, in a hotel. When you're, when you are addressing somebody and you want something, this quisiera word is super important because it is more polite. It is more low key. It means I would like, or really, I would want. We wouldn't say in English, I would want. But it's a way of saying, I would like to have this. And I know it's not using gustar, but it's like us saying, I would like. Quisiera. Quisiera says the, the two form, quisiera. And notice, quisiera is the same for yo, and it's the same for usted, talking to one person, the formal you. Quisieran, with a nut nut on the end, is, you know, would like. Quisieramos, we would like. You're probably not going to use this verb in your presentation for next week, but I want you to know it's out there and that it's important for being polite. Because when you give your little talk, you're not going to be making a request to get this. You're just going to be talking about what you want. 
but it's important that you know this verb quisiera is out there because here is how it would be used. Quisiera un, una cerveza, por favor. I would like a beer. So again, this is not the verb you're going to use in the presentation, but it's important for you to know when you address the, the person in the restaurant or the hotel, you probably want to use this. Quisiera una cerveza. Quisiéramos el menú del día. We would like the daily menu. Quisiera ver el menú. I would like to see the menu. Uh, he said, ah, oh, the waiter may address you. Quisieran beber algo. Or they may phrase that as quisieran tomar algo. Because tomar and beber can both mean drink. Would you guys like to drink something? So that quisiera is a polite, and it's with the back and forth address between the person asking for service and the person tending you, okay? Um, we won't get to these two yet because this will be kind of a step too far. Well, that is another verb, but that's going to be for addressing. So you're going to look only one through six, one through six, these slides, or six slides. You're going to kind of ignore the last two. Uh, and really, what you're going to be using most for your presentation will be this verb, querer, quiero, or queremos, we want, if you want to talk about you and whoever you're traveling with. And you're going to be wanting these verbs, mostly. So your focus will be on these These three well, these four or five pages, whoops, quis, quisiera we won't focus on, but these. All right. And we'll talk a little bit more about quisiera next week and see some more examples of quisiera next week. Okay. So, Uh, para clarificar, to, to clarify, right? I want you to kind of pull all that information together and talk a little bit. I want to say maybe four sentences. Cuatro, maybe four. Talking about what you generally want or what an ideal hotel has for you personally, okay? You may phrase that as I want, or if you travel with a companion who's a family member, a spouse, a friend, you may want to express it as we want. Uh, you may want to say the a good hotel has. You may want to say in my ideal hotel, in mi hotel ideal. I, there is. So I want you to mix up that I and the tiene and the quiero or queremos. You may even want to talk about who you travel with in one little brief sentence. So I will send you an example in the email and these uh, three or four little links so you can kind of look at that information, pull together stuff that's important to you. Entienden? Understand? Yay. Okay. And I'll work up a little mock presentation in the email to show you what that will look like. Okay. Tienen preguntas. Do you guys have any questions? No? Bien. And I'm going to ponder. Yeah, I think I will send you a link to that video, even though it's a little bit complicated. You'll see how a typical interaction is with somebody. It's good for that reason. Vale la pena. It's worth the effort to take a look at it. Gets you, you know, dip your toe in the pool. Right? 
gets you a little bit comfortable with it. Feel free to slow that video down because they'll sound like they're talking really fast to you. They're actually not talking that fast, but if you put it down to 0.75 on, on the settings icon with YouTube, that will help a lot. Okay. Está uh, bien. Vale. Magnifico. Okay. Uh, we will end it for today. Sí. Es, eh, ahora llegamos al fin. We've come to the end. We did our little introduction. Tomorrow, we'll, or next next week, we'll do a little hotel walk. Uh, veo el calendario. I'm looking at the calendar. Tenemos dos semanas más. We've got two more sessions we'll do next week and the week after. La semana que viene y en dos semanas. And that, uh, oh, uno, perdón, no. Una semana, uh, perdón. I am sorry. We have one more week. I'm going to take that week before summer session starts. Summer session starts June 22nd. So the week of June 15th, I am taking off to give my, my brain a little bit of a rest time and a, a general uh, planning time for what I want to do for all three of my groups. Uh, <laughs> for summer, kind of the very general plan, which may morph into different things, but I always get a general mapped out plan for the summer uh, because it will go through all, you know, the end of June, all of July, all of August, into the first week of September. So I take that little week of June 15th to kind of get my mental my map going. Okay, está bien. Muy bien, ok, vale. Entonces, nos vemos la semana de, que viene. Nos vemos el 8 de junio, ¿verdad? Nos vemos el 8 de junio, ¿vale? La última clase, that'll be our last class session, and we'll end it up on that hotel thing. It's, it's a good ending point, ok. Bien. Gracias. Vale, de nada. Es un placer, es un placer, es a pleasure. Y nos vemos la semana que viene, ¿no? Bien. Gracias.